Now, I don't know if you've noticed, we already have a discrepancy between the expense and the payable. And this is a perfect example of how a currency translation adjustment can occur. All right, we're gonna quickly go over some foreign currency definitions because I'm gonna use these terms a lot in this video. So, functional currency. That is the currency the business is transacting in. Reporting currency. This is the currency that the financial statements are reported in. And lastly, the spot rate. This is the rate that you exchange one currency into another currency. These definitions are gonna come in handy because I'm gonna reference functional currency and reporting currency a lot in this. So, functional currency. From FASB's standpoint, functional currency is a matter of fact. Basically, they're gonna go through criteria and look at what are you holding your cash in? What are the cash flows coming in? What type of currency are you selling in? What type of currency are you paying your expenses in? What type of currency are you interacting with uh, intercompany transactions in? What type of currency are you financing stuff in? It should be very obvious what the functional currency is when you're determining it. Once you determine what the functional currency of the entity is, the next thing you wanna look at is, what is the reporting currency? Now you can look at it from two angles. Is the entity just need to be translated into the reporting currency or is it a consolidation effort where you have a foreign subsidiary that's being rolled up into a parent or holding company? Regardless, converting the functional currency into the reporting currency is called currency translation. With foreign currency transactions, you're gonna end up in one or two scenarios. One, the foreign currency translation is gonna end up on the income statement as a foreign currency uh, gain or loss. Uh, that could be scenarios where uh, my functional currency is pounds and I bought something in euros, so I need to translate the purchase. The other scenario that you're gonna run into is when you're taking the functional currency of an entity and converting it into a reporting currency. Let's say my functional entity is in British pounds and my reporting currency is US dollars. When I convert the pounds into dollars uh, for the financial statements, uh, the difference that I have is going to be a foreign currency translation adjustment, and that's gonna go in other comprehensive income in the equity section. It's not gonna go in the income statement, it's gonna go in the balance sheet and other comprehensive income. All right, from here on out, we're gonna focus on currency translation adjustments, taking the functional currency and translating it into the reporting currency. And we're gonna go through the income statement and the balance sheet and how to convert each particular item on both those financial statements, uh, taking the functional currency from the financial statements and converting it into the reporting currency. So let's start with the income statement. So in this scenario, we have rent expense, we have ABC Company UK Limited, and it, the rent expense was a thousand pounds as of 1231 22. What you can do in that situation, you have two options here. Um, I'll give you what I did in practice, and then also I'll give you uh, the other option you can do here. So for rent expense, if you have an accounting system that has foreign currency rates in them, uh, what my experience is you took the average rate of, for the entire month and then converted it that way. So I would take a thousand pounds and then in this scenario, the average rate of GBP to USD, British pounds to US dollars, was 1.3. Now, I made up these rates. Don't go to uh, a website and say, hey, Patrick's got the wrong rates. I just made them up. I probably should have checked them, but I didn't. Uh, so this is just a, a, a fake example. So 1,000 pounds of rent, uh, I'm calculating an average pound to USD translation of 1.3. So when I translate my thousand pounds of rent is 1300 US dollars. And then that's using the average rate for the month. That's what I used in practice. However, you can use the spot rate, the date of that specific transaction. So I, both are okay. Uh, I just know in practice, we always used average. And this is gonna to apply to revenue and any type of expense. The income statement is fairly easy. You take your average rate in this scenario for the month and you convert it. So my thousand pounds times 1.3, $1,300 of rent expense, would apply that to sales, would apply that to other expenses. That is what you do with the income statement. Now the balance sheet's got a couple nuances within it, so let's go over the balance sheet. 
So with the balance sheet, same scenario, you have the thousand pounds of rent. Instead of it, the expense side of it, we're gonna look at the payable side. So you have a payable, a rent payable of a thousand pounds. In this scenario, majority of balance sheet accounts, not all, we'll go through the exceptions. The majority of balance sheet accounts are gonna get translated at the spot rate or the current rate of that day. I'm gonna take my thousand pound rent payable times 1.35, the exchange rate of British pounds to USD on the date of 12-31-22, which is the date of my financials. And my rent payable is actually $1,350. Now, I don't know if you've noticed, we already have a discrepancy between the expense and the payable. And this is a perfect example of how a currency translation adjustment can occur because you're translating different items from your financials at different rates so you're always going to have a gain or loss scenario when you translate them and that's where it ends up in other comprehensive income so let's go through some exceptions some nuances related to currency translation one being in the equity section capital contributions these are going to stay at the historic rate of when the capital was contributed so in this scenario i have a thousand pounds i know that's it's gonna be a thousand pounds throughout this just as a heads up thousand pound capital contribution from ABC US Holding Inc. to ABC Company UK LTD. In that scenario, it was contributed on 12-31-21. The rate on that day was 1.2 pounds to US dollars. In that scenario, that thousand pound contribution is $1,200. The thousand pounds times the 1.2. And you will never change that. No matter what the spot rate is of that date, you're gonna leave it at the historical contribution rate. Uh, next on the list is retained earnings and dividends. These are gonna be a weird historical rolling average. That's kind of a strange concept, but hear me out. In this scenario, so retained earnings, this is the accumulation of net income from the, the time of the entity. So you have, you're gonna have multiple years. And if we go back to the income statement, you could see that we're using an average rate for the month. So in practice, each month has a its own average rate for the month that's converting the income statement in. So your net income is gonna be this combination of 12 months of average rates, and that is going to be in the equity section once you roll your net income into retained earnings. So each year you have this like blended average rate of net income, and you're just accumulating that over time. So uh, this is where you end up with a historical rolling average. And when you convert the balance sheet, you're gonna leave it at that historical rolling average. So with consolidation and related parties, you're always gonna run into these intercompany transactions or intercompany relationships if they're transacting with each other. So you're gonna have a intercompany payable and an intercompany receivable, a due to and a due from. And when you're dealing with a foreign subsidiary that's in a different that has a different functional currency compared to the functional currency of the parent you have currency translation adjustments and this scenario with their intercompany transactions back to the thousand pounds you know, gotta love that so abc company uk ltd has an intercompany receivable from abc company holding inc the u.s parent and right now on the abc company uk ltd that receivable is a thousand pounds on the flip side, ABC Company US Holding Company Incorporated has an intercompany payable to ABC Company UK LTD. Probably should have used different names. Hopefully you're staying with me here. That, that in US dollars currently is $1,250. Now, when you're consolidating these, you need to eliminate your receivable and payable. And to do that, you need to make sure that they equal. So ABC Company UK LTD once it's converted, has a receivable of $1,350. There is a $100 difference. So that is a foreign currency gain or loss. In this situation, it is a loss. So, so we can properly eliminate the receivable and payable in this situation. So in this scenario, I'm gonna debit foreign currency loss, and I'm gonna credit ABC Company UK LTD intercompany payable. Really should have chose different names, but hopefully this works. In that scenario, I've then increased the payable to 1350. I can properly eliminate that. And on, from a consolidation basis, I have $100 foreign currency loss from the translation. All right, next consolidation consideration, we need to be able to eliminate 
the equity section of the foreign subsidiary along with the investment in the foreign subsidiary. Uh, when you're eliminating an investment in a subsidiary, uh, you want to eliminate the equity and you also want to eliminate the investment and those two should equal. So in this scenario, let's run through that. So capital on ABC Company UK LTD is a thousand pounds. It has retained earnings of also a thousand pounds. So total equity of ABC Company UK LTD is two thousand pounds. Now, if we go look on ABC Company US Holding Inc., the investment in ABC Company UK LTD is 2,500. And we're gonna need to eliminate both sides of the equation. So let's, let's currently translate the equity section of ABC Company UK LTD. So in this scenario, the capital, remember, is gonna be at the historic rate. So I'm gonna take my thousand pounds that was contributed and it was contributed at a historical rate of 1.2. So that's gonna be $1,200. The retained earnings, remember it's that weird historical average. So in this scenario, it is a 1.24. And then we also need to eliminate retained earnings. So retained earnings, you gotta remember is that weird historical rolling average. So in that situation, so in this situation, I got a 1.24 rolling historical average rate. I'm gonna take the thousand pounds times 1.24 and I get $1,240. So when I convert the equity section of ABC Company UK LTD, I get a total of $2,440. When I compare that to my investment in ABC Company UK LTD on ABC Company US Holding Inc's books, I got a difference. $2,500 versus $2,440. In this scenario, I have a currency translation adjustment that I need to account for. So in this situation, I am going to run that through other comprehensive income that is not going to flow through the PL. I'm going to debit foreign currency translation adjustment in the equity section under other comprehensive income. And then I'm going to credit investment in ABC Company UK LTD to bring my $2,500 investment and bring it down to $2,440 so I can properly eliminate that transaction. So there's a lot of aspects you wanna take into consideration when you're converting currency, whether you're converting a functional currency into reporting currency, or you're just dealing with foreign currency transactions within the entity itself. So I hope this was helpful. I hope you got something out of this. I knew this was a lot to go through, got kind of deep. Uh, have a good rest of the day, take care, goodbye.